I got this new like diffuser thing at Target. I didn't steal it. I didn't loot it. I didn't burn it down. It's an actual purchase diffuser. I have the receipt. And it makes my rim smell really good. That's like the most foo foo thing I have in here. What's going on everybody? It's Sensei Ichi here. Uh, I thought I would take it down a notch from doing tutorials and try something different. Uh, I had some questions people asked me about if I wanted to talk more about my roots and where I came from. So I thought I'd take this time to do the little segment I like to call the top 10 reasons why I like America Tungsudo. And this is just our America Tungsudo. I know there's other people who are like, well, you're not like my America Tungsudo. I don't really care. Number one, I've been doing America Tungsudo my whole life. So naturally I, I have an affinity for it. Uh, it's something that is a part of who I am. Uh, it is who I am. It defines who I am. Uh, when people ask me what I do, I don't say I'm a car builder or I'm a filmmaker. Uh, the first thing I say is I'm a martial artist. I own a martial arts school. I've been training in America Tungsudo. Uh, I've been training in America Tungsudo since the age of three and I'm 35 now. So if my math is correct, that's what, 32? So it's about 32 years. I know some people are like, well, how in the world did you even pay attention or how could you learn? How could you train at three? Well, I did, okay? My father was my instructor, so that was very helpful. He was always around to help me out, but I just wanted to do it. So it's it's now a part of who I am. So that's kind of why I like it. Number two, America Tongue Sudo has accepted inspiration and taken inspiration from many different facets along the martial arts world. I think that's one reason why I like it the most is that it's so well-rounded. Like. It's just eclectic. I think that's the best that best phrase to use there is that it takes little influences and I don't want to say it steals because it's just not like I stole it and you know I don't give you credit. It's, it's influence. We're influenced by judo, we're influenced by shotokan, we're influenced by kung fu, we're influenced by krav maga, by jiu jitsu. It's, it's all these styles that are influenced into one. I think that's the thing I like the most is that it took little bits of each system that it liked and it's like i'm gonna mold that into something really great it's like a ball of clay that they kind of perfected over the years to make it something that they really wanted and i think that's what we're continuing to do in our system is that we're constantly learning new things and that's what being a student is all about it's always learning it's never stopping even if it's learning something online like this or learning from another student or learning from someone who's been there and done it Anytime you get a chance to learn something new, that's great. And America Tungsudo allows me to be able to learn different pieces and then put them into America Tungsudo so we have a new future. Uh, standing on the shoulders of our ancestors to look into the future of what's to come, of the beauty we can create, all that stuff. So that's another reason why I like America Tungsudo. Number three, we train, at least that's as how it is in our school, we train for realism. Uh, I know there's like the big discussion between like, oh, what's real? Like you don't train for real, you train for like, you know, choreographed martial arts, meh. There's a lot of meh happening. We train in our school at least for realism. We have two different ways of training. We have against like a life threat as if like it's a weapon or someone's choking you or someone's beating the life out of you or like multiple people. We have the life threat training and then we have the not so life threat training. The life threat training is pretty obvious. It's, you know, someone's threatening your life. On the other hand, the antithesis of that would be the soft training the against like what do i tell a seven-year-old who gets into an altercation in school with another seven-year-old or a six-year-old it's like i'm not gonna tell them to like you know start choking him out and like elbowing him in the face it's, that's pretty harsh so if we teach them to how to subdue how to control safely without harming anyone's you know airway or if we teach them how to diffuse the situation with their words or how to block and defend and you know control and move away or take them down so they go on the ground so they can you know tell them whatever so there's like the soft way of training that's the two different kind of fields of training that we do and i like that we train for both situations and we teach that number four this is a hated one but i love our forms i think our forms are great i've seen other forms of different styles i've done other forms of different styles and i think i like ours better i like the flow of them i like that there's transitions I like those interpretations I love how smooth it is the elegance of it I, you've seen me do different videos of demonstrations before so I feel like you kind of get the vibe I like to demonstrate that style and I'm gonna do a video in the future about how to do more like dynamic dramatic like tournament style demonstration forms that's kind of more my thing uh, but I just I love our forms I think they're great I love all of them and I like that we kind of created two new ones so it's, it's kind of fun number five the history so America's Tongue Show is a relatively young system compared to the other you know Karate and Kung Fu and all those systems that go way, way, way back. But Tang Sudo obviously is an older tradition, but America Tang Sudo is even younger. But I love the history of it because 
it was founded by American Tonks at least was founded by an American. It has a cool origin story of how Chuck Norris found American Tonks or found Tonks when he was in the Korean War, and it's a neat little story. I'll tell you guys about that later. Um, but it was just is really neat history. So it was kind of cool. I like the history of Tonks I love the history of Tonks and how Wong Ki fled from you know Korea to avoid the persecution, how he went to China and went to Japan to learn different systems and different styles. I like that history as well. I think that that directly ties into and correlates to American Tong Sido as well. So the history is rich. Good. Leading on to the next one, number six. Chuck Norris is the founder of American Tong Sido. I mean, come on. Does it get better than that? It's Chuck Norris, dude. Chuck Norris got the coronavirus and the coronavirus had to get quarantined for two weeks. That's how gnarly Chuck Norris is. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Chuck Norris. I hope the day ever comes that my father and I can both kind of, he can rekindle the flame and not like in a weird way, but he can re-talk to Chuck Norris again. He can meet him again and I get to meet him for the first time. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping that someday that does happen. But I mean, Chuck Norris at the founder, that's pretty rad. Uh, he once told a story at an event uh, that we went to and he said of how he discovered Tung Sido. He said one time he saw, he was on the in the Korean War, so he was on the military base and he saw a hill like a, a grass hill and he saw, all of a sudden saw these heads just bouncing up and just popping up over the hill and he's like what the heck is that and he was in war so he's like oh like are we getting attacked here are we getting sabotaged so he crept over there and he looked over and there's a bunch of guys doing jump turning heel kicks and there's just like a bunch of jump turning heel kicks and he said he looked that interesting so him and pat johnson were like hey do you think we can join so they started joining and bob's your uncle america tongue Sido started that day and they didn't even know it so that's a little little story time for you i don't have as good as stories as my father but that's the one from chuck norris that i I remember. Number seven, Koreans are known for their kicks. That's a given. Taekwondo is obviously like the most kicking system out there, right? So, well, one of them. So, I love that our kicks are, I don't want to say better, but they're a little maybe stronger than most systems. We pride ourselves on our kicks, obviously. So, I like the kicks that we do. I love the jump kicks that we do. Um, I don't know if other schools do jump kicks, but I've really tried to go to the periphery of jump kick education in terms of how many different jump kicks I can do, multiple kicks in the air, board breaking kicks, target hitting, trick kicking, all those different things I love about kicks, and they're fun. I love that our history of Tong Sido has that like kicking background, and I, I'm really interested I'm, to know more about the kicking background. but. We also have obviously hands as well as kicks. I know Taekwondo does more kicks, but we have an e equal balance. But I love that we do a lot of kicks and I think the kicks are fun. They're very powerful, they're very strong. Uh, you could do crazy things with your legs that you know sometimes you can't do with your hands and jump hands is kind of funny looking, but jump kicks are cool. So I really love the kicks and I hope that you guys love the kicks as well. The Chinese influence is number eight. Tung Sido translates and people have their own translations, but I, I know the translation of Tung Sido as the way of the Chinese hand. I've heard the way of the China hand, the way of the Tang hand, but Tang and the China hand, it's pretty much the same thing because the Tang Dynasty was in China. So it's relatively the same concept, tomato, tomato. So the Chinese influence was Grandmaster Wang Qi, the founder of Tang Sido, fled from Korea to go to China to avoid the persecution and he learned from Chinese martial artists. So that's why our system has very smooth and fluid techniques. And I like that about it. I was talking about the forms, how they're very smooth and fluid. It's the same way. So I like that there's that Chinese influence because you can see it. When we did Shotokan forms, it's very strong, very solid, which is great. But I love the kind of the relaxation. Usually I'm very chill and very tranquil. So I like to have that tranquil, chill Chinese side mixed with a very strong Japanese influence of our system and my heritage. So that's what I like about the system. Number nine. So there is a group of kind of ninja. They're called the Sulsa Warriors. They were the Korean Tang Sido version of the Japanese ninja. They were like stealth assassins, like the rain, the Green Beret or something like that, or the Navy SEALs. They were the, the Korean version of that. So they would go you know, behind enemy lines and do secret sabotage work and all crazy cool stuff like that using the Tang Sido that they know. So it was kind of cool to hear about that history. Uh, one of We have black belt team testing and one of the fathers brought it up and he was like, hey, did you hear about these social warriors? And so I did the research on it. It was, it was very fascinating, it's very cool. It's a very good read. So I, I look into that, the social warriors. I'll leave the link down below to, uh, to where I found that information. Number 10 in the final one, the freedom of expression. I like to think that I'm a very creative person. Um, I, not that I am creative, but I like to be creative, I guess you should say. I make films, I build cars, I create the cars from the ground up. I like to do art, um, you know, painting and drawing and sketching and things like that. So for me to have that opportunity in something that is a part of my life, to be able to express myself, like Bruce Lee once said, to be able to be as creative as I can in terms of how far can I take Tang Sudo? What can I add to it? Uh, what can I change what I already learned to kind of teach it differently? I like to be creative in that sense to how can I teach you a punch you knew already, but how can I make it different for you? How can I make kicks different for you? How can I make forms exciting for you if you don't love doing them? 
that's just what I love the most about it, is that freedom of expression. There might be that in other systems, but I know that there is some sort of like a, I don't want to say this like harshly, but there's a very dogmatic law in a lot of the hard style systems that you don't really get a chance to tweak and adjust to make it better. It's like, this is what it is. And that's all that it's going to be. Don't ever question me again. But in America's Tongue Sudo, my father allows us to create more and he's created more since he learned from his instructor. And I think that's what makes anything great is, is for the sign of a great teacher is a great student and the student can create more and hopefully out smart, outwit, outthink the teacher. That way the teacher is like, I did a good job. I taught my student to be better than I. That's I feel like that's how parents want to be with their kids. I want you to be better than what I have done. I want you to leave this world a better place than when I created it for you. So I like that freedom of expression in America's Song Sudo. And I think that it allows us to, to add more and we're constantly adding more. I think the most recent thing we started adding was more jujitsu and more Krav Maga. And I think that that goes along with my other statement of saying that we train for realism. So I like that we get that opportunity to train for realism. I like the opportunity that we could add more to the system that is already great. So I, I kind of like that a lot. And I love that it gives me that freedom to to create and be the best Tang Sudo martial artist that I can be. Okay, boys and girls, that wraps it up. Uh, I hope that you enjoy that. That was just uh, something a little different. I'm, I always try to think of different things to do because I don't want to make the monotonous channel that's just continuously boring. Uh, so I want to give you guys something new to kind of think about and see a different side of me that you didn't know what goes on in this brain of mine. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment below. Tell me if uh, you also train in Tang Sudo or let me know if you some things you like about your system. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us. This is Sensei Ichi. Uh, hit the subscribe button, that way you can be a part of the family. Hit the notification bell, that way you'll be notified every single time a video comes out. We put out a video every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that's pretty much about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next Monday, Tongsu.